Hi, welcome to Exploring the Illusion of Free Will. My name is George Ortega and today's topic is because essential elements of every decision are stored in the unconscious, free will is impossible. Okay, um, first thing we want to do is go through the purpose of this show, why I'm doing this show. Um, I like to start shows like this because this isn't just a, um, a trivial, inconsequential consideration. This isn't a, a trivial question. It's, it's um, import and influence span um, every aspect of our lives. And the problem is that it's not through no fault of our own because we don't have a free will. We have been predetermined, though, to believe that we do. Um, and to the extent that we have that belief, that creates havoc. It um, pits us against other people, pits groups against other groups. It um, causes us to blame and punish ourselves um, in many cases. And it's just like, you know, like most fundamentally, it's like we're living a lie. You know, it's, it's like it's absurd. And again, we can't blame us because like we didn't decide to, um, to have this illusion of free will. That is that was as predetermined as every other of our decisions, every one of, of our other decisions. But, but the idea is that, um, that we do have this illusion. And apparently, apparently um, reality, the causal past, God, whatever you want to call it, is um, actually in the process of awakening us to this illusion. Um, Illusions have their time. Um, there was the illusion of a flat earth that um, when Copernicus, Galileo, those guys, you know, came around, um, we discovered that no, the earth wasn't flat. And so like now is the time for the planet to realize that, hey, um, free will is an illusion. Everything is predetermined. Everything is, um, well, our decisions are unconscious, actually, as, as this go show is going to be about. And the, the better and the sooner we understand this, the better and sooner we can create a much more wonderful world based on that premise rather than, you know, the premise that we have now that, that basically, yeah, when we blame, we aggress, we compete, we just like, you know, it just, it's not for, it doesn't make for very good harmony. All right. So, um, now like if, if you, um, damn, I don't know which, I think it's the middle camera. Okay. <laughs> if, if you don't, um, if you want to see some of the other shows, there's, um, there are 25 episodes up there um, as of this, you know, as of now on, on causalconsciousness.com. Okay, if you Google exploring the illusion of free will, it should be the first result. Okay, causalconsciousness.com. And I'm working on the site now, actually. So in addition to the um, to the um, episodes that I have on there. They're hosted by Blip TV, who's also actually distributing them to, um, to other internet um, TV venues, which is pretty cool. But in addition to the videos, I'm planning to have just basic, concise explanations of why free will is impossible and, you know, what the nature of our will is. All right. Um, and the last thing I want to do before we get into... Um, you know, why our unconscious, why the fact that we have our unconscious makes free will impossible. Let's, um, let's define what we mean when we say um, we have a free will. Basically, the term free will means that we, whatever we decide is completely up to us, that it doesn't matter what we learned, what our parents taught us, what they didn't teach us. It doesn't matter what our genetic makeup is. You know, it doesn't matter what we learned. It doesn't matter what our memories are. Um, it doesn't matter what our personality is. It doesn't matter what our preferences are. That regardless of all this stuff that in reality compels everything we do, um, that we can choose our thoughts completely on our own. And of course, it's absurd. Um, the, the easiest way to, find, to realize how absurd it is, although I'm going to push, I'm going to stay with this unconscious theme because it's, while it may not be the easiest, it may actually be the most intuitive. Um, but the easiest way is causality. If everything has a cause and every one of our decisions has a cause, then 
the cause of that decision has a cause and the cause of that cause has a cause and you have this causal regression going back to before we were born before the planet was created before the big bang <laughs> that's determining everything that's happening now okay um it's causality simple causality all right so let's get to the topic all right because essential elements of every decision are stored in our unconscious free will is impo impossible what are those essential elements one the data, the, the information, the memories, the, the learning, the stuff that's in our unconscious that we, we base our decision on. Because like you have to realize um, we do not um, just decide randomly because that's not the meaning of, ran of free will. Free will pretty much would say that, um, that we decide because of some reason you know and that and we could take credit for the reason because like you know we're making the decision or or we could um all right now I, I don't want to confuse it all right so the idea is that um if if we have to base our decisions on what's in our unconscious um free will has to be impossible and the reason is it's twofold. Um, you know, basically with the two elements of the unconscious that, um, that are involved in every decision. All right. Think about what the unconscious means. The unconscious is um, that part of our mind that we are not aware of. Okay, we, we don't know it's there. The only way we know it's there is indirectly through various psychology experiments, through hypnosis experiments, you know, we have determined that there is a, um, and, and actually we do in a sense know it's there. It's, it's basic um, deduction. For example, we don't have conscious knowledge of, of like, let's say, our organs functioning, you know, our heart beating, our lungs moving, our, um, you know, the blood streaming through the, uh, the various... Um, various parts of our body we don't have but but that is all being done that's all being organized being um run by our unconscious and and here's the thing okay that's like so so we we, we understand that there is an unconscious now here's the thing our consciousness our conscious mind is what we are perceiving in the moment right now i'm conscious of these lights, I'm conscious that I'm talking, I'm conscious of what I'm saying, I'm conscious of um, a few things. You know, in real time, because that's the thing, our consciousness only works in real time. You can't be, I mean, you can be conscious of a memory, you know, you can focus on a memory, but, you know, the consciousness is what we're um, basically focusing on, what our, what our conscious mind is focusing on at the moment, okay? Now, Here's the thing. Um, our, our conscious mind cannot in any way retain all that information that we've learned. In other words, like the data, the information, the memories, the morals, the principles, the values upon we base every decision, um, we can't store all that stuff in our conscious mind. You know, we can't. It's impossible. We can only, you know... Um, so, so it must be in the unconscious. Okay, so that, you know, so like that's step one. Every decision that we make has to draw on the unconscious for reasons why, um, why we make the decision, for motivations, for the basic rationale for the, the decision. And it could be, it could be even actually, um, it could be an emotion also, but that's, that, that would complicate it. I mean, I've done shows on that. Okay, so, so that should tell you, that should tell you right off that if what we're basing our every decision is in our unconscious, and we're not conscious of the fact, we're not conscious of that material, we're not, you know, conscious of, of our unconscious, again, that's why they call it the unconscious, then you have a part of us that we have absolutely no con uh, control of, taking a major part, you know, the, the data in every decision we make. Think about it. 
Um, if you don't understand yet how our unconscious makes free will impossible, then consider the second major element in every decision. Um, you have the data upon which we make decisions, the memories, whatever. And then you also have the decision-making process or processes, depending on how you want to see it. Okay, now here's the key point. If all of the data upon which we're basing our decisions is in the unconscious and by definition, clearly, our conscious mind can't, cannot in real time access that because again, it's unconscious then the only part of our mind that has access to that information upon which to base a decision is in the unconscious. It's a part of our mind. In other words, like, so to have access to that information in our unconscious, um, the only thing that has access to it is the unconscious. So there's a region of the unconscious that... Um, for example, stores the information, stores the memories, stores the, um, the learning, stores the considerations upon what we're, we're going to base um, our decision. And then, but, you know, that, that can't be all of it. There has to be the decision-making process. And a lot of that we know in terms of preferences, um, principles. You know, we, we, we tend to want to seek pleasure, avoid pain, do what's right, survive, procreate, whatever, you know, we have all these drives, they're both, there's sometimes these drives are both unconscious and genetic. In other words, they weren't learned, we were just like hardwired with them. So, so again, the, the, the salient crucial point to understanding this is that the only part of our mind that can access the information upon which to make any decision is in our unconscious. Now, you cannot have an unconscious free will because that is simply just absolutely not what the term free will is as, you know, it's been used for hundreds of years um, means. You know, if, if, if a part of us that's, that we, we don't even know is there, let alone we, we can't even control it, is making our every decision, you know, based on knowledge that we can't access because it's also in our unconscious, then clearly free will is an illusion. Then clearly there cannot be free will. It, it must be impossible. Okay, and you know, this, this particular proof, I think I'm going to do a lot of episodes on. And the reason being is that um, it really hasn't been explored much. Um, I may be actually the first psychologist philosopher that's really pushing this. Uh, you might see this... Um, this idea that we have an unconscious and um, our decision making and data storage is both unconscious. You might see certain philosophers, psychologists briefly mention this fact because it's, you know, it hasn't escaped everybody's notice. Um, but, but nobody has yet um, actually run with it. Nobody is, has actually just like taken this consideration and said, wait a minute, this is the way that people can very easily understand why free will is impossible. Um, I gotta toot my horn. I gotta like do my, my own self-promotion on this. Um, Freud, Freud um, was, um, one of the major things he did was, he didn't discover the unconscious because the unconscious was known before him. I think it may have been known as far back as the Greeks. It certainly was known by the hypnotists or mesmerists that preceded Freud. So, so basically, you know, Freud didn't discover the unconscious, but what he did do is he made the public, he made the world aware of the unconscious and its importance, although not its complete importance because he didn't really focus on this issue of human will so very much. He did get it. He did get that, um, that free will is impossible. But he didn't consider it important, which, um, whatever. <laughs> All right, so the idea is, um, so now what Freud did the, um, with regard to the unconscious, because he also like, it's my understanding, he kind of like developed talking therapy, you know, psychotherapy in general. And there may have been, that may have been preceded by a few others, I'm not sure. But anyway, um, 
Freud is credited not for discovering the unconscious, but for bringing it into the public spotlight, for taking it from ac academia and medicine that, you know, people knew about it. But like, sometimes with knowledge like this, fine, it's all right if academia knows about it. If it, it's, if all right, excuse me, it's all right if the medical profession knows about it. But unless people understand it, unless society understands it, then there is going to be limited utility to some kinds of knowledge. And certainly this knowledge about free will falls clearly within that category. So, so Freud, um, Freud brought the truth of the unconscious into the public spotlight, and he you know, pretty much explained why it's important to understand this. You know? So what, what I'm doing, <coughs> excuse me, what I'm doing, and, and I am, you know, I got I to gotta do this. I don't have an advertising campaign. I'm the only person doing this right now. There's a friend of mine we're, we're planning to do a show. Um, hasn't happened yet. Um, well, we, we've actually presented a couple of pilots, but, but it hasn't happened. But essentially, I mean, the academics, you know, it's, it's kind of, it's curious. You can't blame them because they don't have a free will. But for, for academics, for philosophers to not get this, because like a lot of them don't, uh, you have to conclude that this illusion of free will is very valuable to some people for some reason, and is also very effective at circumventing logic, circumventing reason, circumventing science, or anything else. All right, so yeah, what I'm doing is, um, is basically presenting to the world why the fact that we have an unconscious makes free will impossible. And I'm going to go into this over and over, because again, you know, causality, and the other thing with causality, okay, um, we human beings are not very bright, even the brightest of us. Um, in, in physics, um, quantum mechanics came along early 1920s, um, Heisenberg uncertainty principle. They couldn't measure simultaneously the position and momentum of a particle. So these guys concluded that since they couldn't do that, these particles behave in an uncaused manner. These particles behave randomly. The, the, and so any, it's, and it's, it's an absurd, insane, irrational conclusion. But that's what they came up with. Um, so, so yeah, so, and, and the reason I'm focusing on the unconscious is because this whole idea of like whether reality is causal as it is or it's um, random as it's impossible, you know, if anybody like thought about it, things happening at random doesn't even make sense, it's incoherent. Um, so yeah, because of that confusion between um, causality and randomness, and because this is new, because nobody's doing this, nobody really has done this with any kind of, um, with the effort required to gain the understanding and acceptance of the public, of the wider public that, um, that are unconscious, um, makes free will impossible. That's what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm basically um, pioneering this, which is cool. All right. And the cool thing about this, I can't take credit for this. I mean, it's kind of cool to be involved in something like this, but it's not, you know, it wasn't my decision. I don't have a free will, okay? It's like, you know, the universe uses us in whatever way it decides. God, fate, whatever. All right, I'm going to go over this again because sometimes um, you have to hear this sometimes more than once, more than twice, more than three times for it to really sink in, for, for you to really get it. Okay, any decision we make, um, what am I going to do after this? Um, I haven't made plans. I mean, I'm going to go home first and put stuff away, whatever. But after that, I really haven't made plans. So let's say that's the decision. Okay. Now, all these possibilities of what I could do, they're not in my consciousness. Because again, the conscious, my conscious mind can only focus on one thing at a time. In other words, I can't at the same time focus on well, take a walk, go shopping, um, get something to eat, um, listen to some audio files, whatever. I can't, you know, all that stuff cannot be in my conscious mind at the same time. So all these possibilities are in the unconscious mind, in my unconscious. Okay? Now, my conscious mind, my will, okay, let's, let's you know, let's, my will, um, 
is is really my my vol volition <laughs> that which I decide. Oh, I gotta wait. I gotta explain this better. Okay, my not my will. My conscious mind cannot access that information of you know all these considerations. What I'm gonna do, you know, because again they're in in my unconscious. So it can't make the decision. It's not aware. It's not aware even of this region of the brain where all this stuff is stored. It's only aware of it when the unconscious decides to make the conscious mind aware. <laughs> so, so, okay. So what we have, if the conscious mind cannot access the data in our unconscious, it certainly can't decide based on it. And if it can't decide based on the data in the unconscious, what is it going to base its decision on? Um, the only other thing that comes to mind right now, I mean, it's certainly genetic and um, drives and all that, you know, but that's, that's hardwired. That's not going to help free will. The only other kind of considerations that come to mind is real-time perceptions. In other words, I might make a decision looking at this camera right now. I'm perceiving it, so I'm consciously perceiving it, but that's one consideration. That's not going to be the entire, the, the only consideration for whatever I might be deciding, you know, r relative to the camera. So yeah, getting back to the example of what I'll do after this. Um, I've got all these possibilities that are in the unconscious, and the fact that they're in the, un in the unconscious means that the only part of the mind that can access them to reach a decision is our unconscious. Okay? That's like, that's so important. And I'm going to keep going with this. Actually, I, I told myself, like, when, when I have five minutes to go, I'm going to get into some more other stuff. So, and actually, it's about five minutes to go, so I'm going to do this now. All right. Um, yeah, I think, I think, and I'm going to go over this again. If you didn't get it right now, keep watching, check out the website, you will get it. Um, so, the importance of this question. My God. When somebody does something wrong in your life, when somebody behaves in a way that you don't like, you don't understand, you don't appreciate, um, according to the free will perspective, you're going to get angry at him because like, you're going to say he, she of, of their free will is doing that. They're evil, you know, they're whatever they are, you know, and generally when we do that, that's, you know, Sometimes, more often than should be, of course, um, sometimes we aggress with that person. Or at the very least, at the very least, we have these negative feelings in our mind. When we um, form a negative judgment about a person, about a group, then that's a negative emotion. You know, I mean, we might derive some pleasure from it. Sure, there, there are many kinds of emotions and, and circumstances where it's a mixture of pleasure and pain. But certainly, there's going to be displeasure to, um, to blaming someone. And certainly, when you, um, when you have an interaction with that person and you're saying, well, you did that and you're wrong, you're wrong, um, you can understand how the illusion of free will just makes um, human interaction much more difficult because it's, it's, it's an insane perspective. You're, you're actually blaming somebody for doing something that they had absolutely no choice but to do. Okay, and what I like to do to explain this is like, let's say the person was a two-year-old. Nobody ascribes free will to a two-year-old toddler. Nobody, so like the toddler spills milk, you don't blame him, he's a kid, he doesn't know any better. Uh, the toddler does whatever they do, I don't know. So like you, you apply that same reasoning to, to human beings, you know, um, a person behaves in a certain way, they can't, they couldn't have done any better, so you don't blame them now. Now, like with the toddler, okay, a toddler, let's say, is, is reaching for something within his grasp that he shouldn't be grasping, sure, what you're going to do is, like, remove it from his grasp. If a person is, like, doing something that re you really find offensive and you can't, like, you know, you're not going to blame them because you, you understand the free will is impossible, but, like, you still may have to kind of, like, address the situation in some way, um, fight or flight. In other words, if somebody's coming at you <laughs> to hurt you, you know, in the final analysis, in a, in a situation like that, um, you got to defend yourself, right? But 
the, the, the reality of the situation. Those life and death situations are very rare. Most of the stuff that we interact with people about is about opinion, about our basic personality. And when you think about it, you know, one way to, to understand this is like somebody does something. I, I tried this with a friend of mine. It works great. You know, somebody does something. Let's say, try this with a friend. A friend is complaining about somebody else. Ask that friend, well, why is that person like that? And the friend might say, or the person might say, well, you know, that's the way the person's parents are. Or, you know, he, that person grew up in a certain environment. Or, you know, that person learned a certain, you know, some things. Or that person is just like, um, has some biological, some physical um, illness, injury, whatever. The person is like, you know, um, whatever. So, all right, we've got about a minute to go. Um, again, um, I'm creating, I'm producing the show to help create a better world. Um, it's time for the illusion of free will to be exploded because, um, because we've got many, many challenges ahead. We've got climate change. We've got this global economy. We're got, we've got to create a new world. And to the extent that we can get clear on this, I guarantee you it's going to be um, a much more wonderful world for everyone. All right. Well, that's, that's all we have time for today. Um, you know, I'm going to be back every week exploring this from a different angle. Like right now we're talking about the basic fact that free will is impossible through the unconscious. I'm going to go into what it means, you know, like you know, how, how you teach someone that, that free will is impossible, how you learn it yourself, how you integrate it into your life so you can use it, so you don't blame people, you don't blame yourself. All right, well, um, I guess that's it for today. Um, so again, go, go to the website, causalconsciousness.com, exploring illusion of free will, and I'll see you soon.